in business and at every level of government, we hear how important it is for us to graduate more STEM majors, majors in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That our nation's competitiveness actually depends on it. Now, while I agree that graduating more STEM majors is key to our continuing to lead the world in innovation, I'd like to add to that and say we need more STEM graduates trained in the liberal arts. Now, I'm a scientist and a science professor at a liberal arts college, so I think about how STEM fits within the liberal arts all the time. And during those times of reflection, my thoughts often gravitate towards Leonardo da Vinci. So you might say, well, why Leonardo da Vinci? His training, his education modeled the liberal arts ideal where students can study deeply within a major, but they also are required to study other things. This is what he did. He studied tons of different types of things. Now, by no means am I a da Vinci scholar. Like most, I can appreciate what he contributed to the arts. But as a scientist, I get really excited when I think about what he was able to accomplish in science and engineering. Now, I often wonder, though, could he have imagined feats of engineering like his flying machines? But could he have imagined things like this had he not also studied the arts? But on the other hand, could he have painted so well and sculpted the human body so perfectly had he not also studied anatomy, and he did this by dissecting human corpses. So I guess you could say he was really curious. <laughs> now, many in, in government and business openly question the value of a liberal arts education. So I think a fair question to ask really is, is it worth it? Especially considering the fact that liberal arts degrees are generally quite a bit more expensive. So access is an issue that I hope we do a better job at as we go down the road. But for now, let's talk about its advantages. First, the liberal arts education allows the students to integrate ideas from all of these different disciplines and then apply that knowledge to solving science-related problems. For example, my chemistry graduates, they know their way around the laboratory. They've mastered laboratory skills, but they're also nimble thinkers. They know to consider chemistry's impact on society and the environment. Second, is effective communication. Science is of little value if it's not effectively shared with others. So to this point, liberal arts students definitely have an advantage because they study writing and they study analyses of text. And this allows them to talk about science and write about science as professionals. And this can happen as early on as during their undergraduate years. As a matter of fact, the first drafts of two of my most recent scientific publications were written by my undergraduates. So I actually used their stuff, but I gave them credit. So they are listed as co-authors on those publications. Now, the third point, I think, is actually the most important, and that's this idea of close learning, the opportunity for the undergraduate to work side by side with the head of the laboratory. Now, at a university, there are no doubt more opportunities to employ undergraduates simply because there's more funding available. But my students and I do all of the steps of the research together, from planning the experiments, going into the laboratory, doing the, doing the work, 
gathering and analyzing the data, and, of course, writing it up. So after two to three years of direct mentoring, they develop into real scientists. And that is a result of them being mentored in a nurturing environment. Now, when I think about the future, I can't help but remember Steve Jobs. And that's because he got it. He knew Apple's ability to create products like the iPad at that time depended on them using a multidisciplinary approach. Apple carefully considers the tech side and the human side, creating products that work well, are user-friendly, and let's face it, Apple products are most of the time pretty hot, right? <laughs> the evidence is in the fact that people go to the Apple store, set up a tent, sleep in it overnight so that they can be one of the first ones to get that hot new Apple product. So I think Apple knows how to give the consumers exactly what they want. Now, when I think about the future, I cannot imagine the gadgets that will be commonplace 10, 15 years down the road. But more importantly than that, think about the global issues that, will, that we will face in the future. I cannot imagine the issues that we'll face in the future. It's kind of scary when I think about it, but I become encouraged when I imagine a team of scholars applying cross-disciplinary approaches to solving those problems that we'll face in the future, drawing from a pool of knowledge that is both deep and wide. Scholars who, like da Vinci, have insatiable curiosity. All of this can happen as a result of a liberal arts education. And for these innovators, there is no limit, no limit to what they can create. Thanks, folks.